guys, this is part two of the Q&A. If you didn't get a chance to see part one, go ahead and watch that one. I will link the video down below. And in part one, I covered all of your pregnancy and postpartum questions, and you also had some parenting questions for me. So all of those juicy questions were in part one. We're gonna move on to part two. And in this one, the questions are general questions for me, and then I have one on marriage about me and my husband. So let's jump into part two of the Q&A. Updates on your daughter's milestones, eating, activities, etc. I know, I feel like since I stopped doing monthly updates with her, she has changed so much. I did an update every month from when she was one month old all the way to a year. And yeah, since she turned a year, like she's like a little girl now, it's crazy. Um, let me think of some things right off the top of my head. Well, she runs everywhere. Like I think she had just started walking at her one year update. She literally runs everywhere. She is so goofy. She knows a ton of words now. Um, I try to capture a lot of that on Instagram, like on stories and stuff. And lately I've noticed like if she's trying to tell us something, whether she's frustrated or sad or happy, she will look us in the eye and talk to us, but it's complete gibberish. But the, the tone she's using and her mannerism is like she's trying to have a conversation with us, even though we have no idea what she's saying. And I just think that is adorable. Um, eating, she is getting quite a bit pickier. She definitely still has her favorite foods and any of those. She's like a, a garbage disposal. She will keep going more and asking for more. Um, so I have to like limit <laughs> how much she gets because she will just eat and eat and eat when it's something she likes. But she is getting a bit pickier, especially with like vegetables, which wonder where she gets that from. <laughs> um, activities that she likes to do. She loves playing with dolls. She loves playing with her play kitchen set and pretending to eat out of like her little plastic bowls or out of her uh, little plastic plates that came with her kitchen set or like drink out of the plastic cups and we will sit on the floor and I'll say, okay, can you bring me a bowl and a spoon? And she will go get a bowl and a spoon from her kitchen set and give it to me and that's really fun. She loves playing with her little um, plastic animals and I'll say which one says moo and she'll get she'll go get the cow. So she's just learning so much. She knows so much. She understands most of what we say to her even if she can't verbally say it herself yet. Um, so yeah, I could go on and on and on. But like I said, I try to capture a lot of cute moments and new things that she does over on stories on Instagram. So make sure you follow me over there. How do you keep your daughter entertained? I'm struggling. I think so many of us can relate to this, especially with the pandemic. And I know a lot of things still haven't opened up or are getting ready to shut down again. Um, and yeah, I think a lot of us can relate to this with young kids. What I do is, first of all, we have a pretty um, predictable routine. We have pretty much the same routine every day, but when it comes to playtime, like free time, which we have obviously in the morning before nap, and then when she wakes up after nap, up until like dinner and whatnot, during that time I try to mix it up. I try not to expect her to play with the same toys every day and to do the same activities every day. So. One way I do that is toy rotation. Um, she does not have all of her toys out at once. I'll keep a chunk of them like in her closet in her room and then she'll play with the ones that are out for a week or so. And then I'll kind of rotate them. I'll put some in her closet and bring the ones that were put away and bring those out so they're kind of like new and they get reinterested in them and that really helps to keep her attention. Um, some things that we've been doing new with her that she's enjoyed is coloring. So I'll give her like a plain white piece of paper and use some painter's tape to kind of tape it on her little table. That way it's not sliding all over the place. And she has like these big chunky toddler crayons that she scribbles with. And sometimes she just likes to pick up the crayons and we talk about what colors they are. And there's not a lot of coloring going on, but it's still something new to hold and, you know. Um, we will go outside in the backyard and draw on the sidewalk. We have some sidewalk chalk. Sometimes we'll just go outside and even though we really don't have any outdoor toys other than the sidewalk chalk, 
she just likes being outside if i'm ever really struggling for ideas i will jump on pinterest and just type in indoor activities for toddlers or for one-year-olds or outdoor activities and there is unlimited <laughs> recommendations over there so definitely just google some ideas get on pinterest youtube whatever and you will find all kinds of things that you never thought of probably with stuff you already have laying around your house that you would never think of as a toy but you'd be amazed what can entertain a toddler what are you planning on doing differently parenting wise for journey parenting wise um nothing particularly since brinley's so young i feel like we're still me and my husband both are still kind of developing our parenting style but as far as like i'll say like in the newborn stage um not being so fixated on a schedule newborns and young babies in general um there's not much of a schedule those first couple of months and as long as your baby is fed and diaper is changed and you know all of that that's the most important things they can sleep when they want to sleep and all of that so not fixating on so much of a routine in the beginning um I think that as second time moms you naturally get a confidence that maybe you didn't have as much of the first time because you've already done this and for me I just did this so it's more familiar territory but as far as like parenting as my girls get older I think we'll use pretty much the same parenting style with both of them. I know that different kids have different needs and that's something we'll address when we come to particular situations that maybe journey needs addressed differently than Brinley but yeah I don't have anything in mind that I can say like I want to do this different as far as parenting style okay so the question I have just on like marriage is what I categorized it as how do you keep the spark alive when Xavian is gone for long periods of time so for those of you that don't know I am a Navy wife my husband is in the Navy and we have spent many months apart from each other um, but honestly like we kind of talked about this last night the last time he was gone for a really 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 long time and wasn't able to come home for a weekend here or there was three to four years ago he was in the Middle East and he was deployed for 14 months and that was our first year of marriage and he did not he was not able to come home at all during those 14 months so that was a very long time obviously um, that was before we had kids and all of that and we were definitely still like in the newlywed phase and I think how we kept our spark and our relationship while being apart is um, like I would send him care packages so that was kind of like me being a romantic and sending him some pieces from home um, we really would send each other messages here and there when we could just like long mushy messages to wake up to and tell each other how much we love each other and like you know newlywed stuff and I mean to be completely honest we did a lot of sexting you know that's that's something that you can do if you're comfortable with when you're apart from each other that will keep it interesting for sure <laughs> And then when he was in dive school, which was last year while I was pregnant with Brinley, he was gone for seven months, but he was able to come home at least once every two months we saw each other. And then there at the end, he came home almost every single weekend at the end of my pregnancy. Um, and then to see Brinley when she was a newborn, he would come home every other weekend. So we were able to see each other quite a bit then. But even then, like just keeping communication alive, I would send him tons of pictures of Brinley or just tons of pictures of me with my big old belly before I had her and just sending each other sweet texts, calling each other baby, telling each other how much you love each other and just communicating I think is a really important way to keep that spark. Okay, the rest of the questions are just general questions for me and the first one is plans for Christmas this year? <sighs> It's up in the open. <laughs> My hope for plans for Christmas this year is that Xavier will be able to come home. He is getting ready to leave for four months again um, for a program he gets to go 
to as a diver. And my plan is that they somehow allow him to come home for a few days so that he can spend Christmas morning with me in Brindley. Um, it's not promised, but that is my hope. And then the following week, of course, we're going into like New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. I will most likely spend a few days down in our hometown with my family and with Sabian's family just to see them a little bit and kind of celebrate Christmas a few days late after he has to go back to Panama City Beach. So that is basically our plan. Um, if he isn't able to come home, I still want to be here Christmas morning with Brinley so that she can open her presents at her house. I just think that's really important to keep that tradition now that we're parents is for our kids to have Christmas morning in their own home. Um, and then I would still go down to our hometown to see our family. But yeah, that's pretty much our plan. Are you moving soon? No, we will be here in Georgia for two more years as of now. I mean, anything can happen. You never have too much of concrete plans when you're a military family, but as far as we know, we'll be here for two more years, and then after that, yes, we will be moving. Do you plan on making more cleaning videos? Um, so the reason why I don't do a lot of cleaning videos right now is because mainly they don't do very well on my channel, and I know that some of you really enjoy them, but and I appreciate that, but I have to do what is best for my channel and what is going to help my channel grow and cleaning videos really aren't that i think that as a youtuber you really have to like find your niche and find what your viewers love the most and for me that is clearly <laughs> pregnancy videos all of my highly viewed videos are on pregnancy now obviously this is my last pregnancy so i can only do so many more of those for you guys but um, my motherhood and my routine videos also do really well, so that is why I mostly center my channel around like parenting, pregnancy, motherhood, because that's what seems to do the best with my subscribers and my viewers. Um, once I'm no longer pregnant and maybe a year down the road when I'm really getting the swing of things with two kids, Maybe I will do like a series of cleaning videos on my channel and try that out again once my channel grows a little bit because I do like doing them. I like doing voiceovers with cleaning videos and kind of chatting with you guys while giving you motivation to clean, but I do have to kind of think about what's best for my channel too. How are you guys handling COVID? I, I feel like at this point we're just like, whatever, like what? And let me start off by saying I know COVID is 100% real. I know that unfortunately many have lost their lives with COVID and it has affected so many families in a negative way. And for that, I take very seriously. So don't take anything I'm about to say lightly in that way because it's, it's not true. But um, in the beginning with COVID, you know, everything was so new and unknown and very scary for me and we didn't go anywhere. Me and Brinley did not leave the house and I mean I was sanitizing Xavier's clothes as soon as he walked in the door like he was getting undressed in the laundry room and I was washing his clothes with like laundry sanitizer and we were taking things very 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 seriously. Um, I mean that was in March so here we are in November. I think if I would have kept up with that level of caution I'd lose my mind. Like, I personally cannot live in fear like that for this long. I'm not saying COVID has gotten better. I'm aware of the numbers. I know it's still very much going on. But my motto is the faith over fear. I believe that God will get us as a nation and as a world and as a family through this tough time and yeah faith over fear we we go out in public like we did before um, we wear masks where it is enforced but in our area it's not enforced everywhere and so you know that's that's my personal decision Xavier has to wear a mask at work he has to wear a mask pretty much at all times so he does abide by the military safety regulations because he has to I'm a civilian, so I have a little bit more freedom when it comes to that, and 
I practice that freedom and that is my choice. And yeah, if you choose to still stay at home and social distance to the max, totally respect that. But I think we can all agree when I say I am just ready for this whole thing to be over with. But I know that's super wishful thinking. Are you getting a COVID vaccine? Hmm, I almost was wondering if I maybe shouldn't answer this one. Again, disclaimer, um, I totally respect your opinion and your side on this because I know this topic is very controversial nowadays. So totally respect whichever, which way you are on this. I get it and I understand and I just ask for the same respect in return. First of all, I just want to say vaccines in general. I did so much research on this topic before I gave birth to Brenly because for a long time I was really on the fence on whether or not we would vaccinate or whether we wouldn't. And it was something me and Xavier discussed many times, the risks and the benefits and all of that. And I, we do vaccine Brindley. We get vaccinations ourselves. He, of course, has to because he's in the military. Um, so he most likely will absolutely have to get a COVID vaccine because that's how the military is. But as far as like me and my kids go, um, I'm, I'm still kind of an on the fencer when it comes to vaccines. I feel like there's still so much more I could know about them, but I have chosen to follow CDC recommendations when it comes to vaccines. And that's my personal beliefs and opinion that I'm allowed to have. Um, but I will say that I have a lot of questions when it comes to new vaccines and a lot of fear when it comes to new vaccines. Like there's so much we don't know. So at this point, and I have every right to change my mind later, at this point, um, when the COVID vaccine is available to the public, I'm not gonna run out and go get one. I feel like I need more information. I have nothing against those who do. Um, I think because of how much research I did is why like, I totally understand why my friends who don't get their kids vaccina vaccinated, I understand why. And my friends who do, I understand why they do. I do, you know, like I understand both points and I respect both points. And with this being such a new vaccine and me wanting more information on long-term side effects, which we don't know yet, um, I'm not going to run out and go get one. You know, it. I don't know mandatory laws and how that will work. I, I will say I don't think it's right to force vaccines on anyone. I think we all should be able to make that choice for ourselves. Again, I know super like touchy subject, but that's my opinion. Like we shouldn't tell people what they have to put in their bodies. It should be our choice. So yeah, that's how I feel about that. Have you jumped on the essential oils bandwagon? I'm like this close. <laughs> I have almost jumped on the essential oils bandwagon so many times. Um, I have essential oils. I love them. I love the smell of them. I mostly use them for diffusing. Um, don't use them that often. I still love my candles. I actually tried quitting Bath & Body Works candles this year. That was like a goal of mine and I didn't buy any from February up until last week <laughs> and I can't resist Bath & Body Works Christmas scented candles. I I just can't. I needed them. I wanted them. I went out and got two of them. And I'm probably going to go out and get two more this week because I'm already through one of them. So I feel like I have to go one way or the other. I know that's totally not the case. You can love candles and essential oils, but I haven't fully committed to the essential oils band bandwagon because it's expensive to get into, especially like the pure therapeutic grade. I don't just want to get like the cheap ones. I want to get the good stuff um, and it's expensive to get into even though it's a lot more expensive to buy all the candles that I buy. Just, yeah, That's where I'm at <laughs> with that um, but I do love essential oils and I, I do love diffusing them. I have used them topically in the past and yeah I just love candles too. I can't make up my mind.
favorite show to binge on Netflix? I feel like I don't watch that much Netflix anymore. I'm mostly into Hulu and YouTube. I watch a ton of YouTube. I have so many YouTubers that I follow and keep up with their videos. Um, there was a show on Netflix out, was it the beginning of this year, I think? Uh, Sweet Magnolias. Oh, I did binge that in like two days. That was an amazing show. Um, I know that a second season I think is coming out like next year or something. I love binge watching older shows like Gilmore Girls. I can't even tell you guys how many times I have watched Gilmore Girls over and over and over and I'm pretty sure that's still on Netflix. I think Friends isn't on Netflix anymore but when it was I binged that like two or three times. I love Friends. Um, on Hulu I binged One Tree Hill a couple times. Also one of my all-time favorite oldies. Um, and right now I am watching um, This Is Us for the first time. I'm almost to season four, which I think there's only five seasons, like, to date, maybe six. I know I'm not that far behind. I've, I've caught up pretty quickly. I started watching them a few months ago, so I guess not pretty quickly. But I'll watch, like, two or three episodes a week. After Brinley goes to bed, I'll watch an episode, or um, sometimes during her nap time I'll watch an episode. So I don't have a lot of time to binge TV lately because I value my sleep. I cannot stay up till midnight binge watching a show. Nothing is worth missing out on sleep. <laughs> no show, in my opinion. I I need my sleep right now being pregnant. But I will say that shows that suck me in are like, cri not really crime, but like um, documentary mysteries, like Making a Murderer. I know that's been out for years now, but that was one I definitely binged. I think, what, like how many years ago did that come out? Loved that one. Um, shows about people in jail. Me and my friend were just talking about this. Like, why does that interest me? I have no idea. <laughs> but yeah, shows like that, shows about real life crime that maybe isn't, uh, that went unsolved or something, or like life as an inmate. I don't know why. Shows like that really suck me in and I will binge watch stuff like that. <laughs> Okay, that is the end of part two of this Q&A. Thank you guys so much for sending in your questions. If you have any others that I didn't touch on, I think I pretty much answered all of the questions that were sent in. But if you have any that you didn't think to submit, um, just leave them down in the comments and I will try my best to answer them. And I will see you guys in my next video. Don't forget to give this one a thumbs up and subscribe if you are new. Bye.